Well, today is a unique episode of the Becoming an Elite Financial Advisor podcast, where we help financial professionals like you recognize and reach your potential faster. We're sharing a conversation that Sen and I had about one of the members of our Elite Advisor network. He's been doing paid planning and his team is growing as a result, which is great. But lately, he's been struggling with closing planning clients that he presents plans to. So what's wrong with his process? Is he maybe not showing the value of his advice? Is he taking too long to give value during meetings? Or is he overcomplicating the ideas that he's presenting? Or is he simply getting the wrong leads? Well, today we're gonna work through his situation and help you, in turn, learn to better qualify your financial planning leads. Here's my conversation with Sten Morgan. Well, Sten, thanks for joining me again. I appreciate it. Happy to be here. We uh, have, uh, I think, a unique episode where we're going to actually take uh, a conversation that I had with a member of our community uh, about some frustrations. Uh, I think that one of the things that I value, I think that our listeners value as well, is like, tell us where it's hard. To just be realistic. It's not all daisies and roses. Like, yep. you know, it, it's work. It's work to refine this process. Now, I will say that this um, member of our community is... Uh, has added planning to their to their uh, their company. They actually hired another administrator this year uh, to help with that workload. But they're they're struggling. Uh, and here here are their words: it "says uh, I'm struggling in my process to not drag out the quote courting process and get ca- cases closed sooner." So I asked some questions and I said, "You know, can, can give me some give me some examples where the process has dragged out where you didn't close the business." And they, res- they responded, I think the biggest issue here is taking unqualified prospects through the process. Uh, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Like someone doesn't need the full breadth of our services or advice. Mm. Um, and they're trying to still install, install value, but they're having a hard time. It says, even though I know the value's there, it's almost like they want a simple plan without any extra guidance. And so I said, you know, how many times are you meeting with them? And they said, it's an intro call, discovery session, and then a plan proposal meeting and that could lead to onboarding. And you know, I asked about their, their planning ideas and they have some pretty solid planning ideas. Um, and I said, are you quantifying the value of that advice? Are you mm-hmm. saying, hey, here's how much? And they said, yeah, most of the time. And here's what's interesting. I said, are you getting to the point where you actually give them a proposal? And they said, yes, like I'm, I'm pitching proposals. Yep. Um, and so I asked how long it's taking. They said it's about two to three weeks, which doesn't seem too long, right? Yeah. So it's not taking too long. Um, so, but they're not, their close rate is not good. Yeah. Um, so what are some areas that they, they could improve in their process, um, as, as part of this whole thing from, from finding people to meeting with them, to teaching, to pricing? Yep. I think we do need to keep in mind, and this is, this works if you do it well. And so if it's not working, there is something that's broke that can be fixed. And so at the highest level, I'd say are the right people coming in to the door. That doesn't mean, you know, you can no longer work with the, the pre-retiree that doesn't have a business or complexity. Like, you know, Legacy has an investment-only service model. If somebody comes in that meets our minimum and we can invest their money, hey, we're happy. We'll do a great job with that and we'll serve them really well. Yeah. But if we propose a plan to somebody, we know that there is a chance that's that we can add a lot of value and we communicate that value. But if the people coming into my funnel still are pre-retirees with no complexity, no tax planning needed. They have each get social security and an IRA distribution each year. Yeah. And I'm proposing a plan to them. Yeah. That, that may not have a high close rate. I could still try to get better at selling it and get them to convert, but I may lack the confidence in the value it's going to add to really lean into like, this is something you need to do. So step one is for advisors that are converting to planning, planning consulting will usually be different clients than you've talked to in the past. That's a, I mean, that's a big, um, that's the most uncomfortable part because it's uh, from, from talking to advisors. Mm-hmm. This sounds great. This sounds great. That sounds great. And that first question, ninety percent of the time, is, "What do I do with my current clients? Can I go back to them and ask them if they want to do planning?" Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what I what I give them this example of like you've never gone through a drive through, and you know you get to get your food, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's going to be three more dollars." And you're like, oh, okay, but what else? What, um, did, am I getting a milkshake? They're like, no, no, you're getting the same thing. It's just three more dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like if I pay more, I should be getting more. No, no, it's just three. So I said, you know, you can't offer, you can't increase your your, your fee. 
if you're not offering something different. That's right. So it, it can be difficult then. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh darn it, I just wanted to kind of go back to the, to the well of people yep. I already have. But what you're saying is you, you, you probably have to go find mm -hmm. some new people. Yep. And most advisors have a really high retention rate, even if their clients are not overserved. So part of this process is going back to your current client saying, okay, what's a, what's a good service model for an investment only client? And I'm going to dial them into that. Right. With this extra time I freed up that I was over serving clients or, you know, not being effective or not That's getting other point. clients. Yeah. I'm going to apply that to new planning clients. And you will most likely in your book have some clients that need planning, but it has to be essentially like a re-engagement. Yeah. Hey, this is what we've done for you in the past, but we've added expertise to our team. No, I'm going to, I'm going to stop. This is really important if you're listening, <laughs> because this, this language is like, how do you get the second date? You yeah. know what I mean? How do you move the relationship? I mean, it, it's a big deal. Yeah. You know, getting the first date, sure, sure, I'll yeah. give you a shot, right? But, but this is a big deal, and this is a, and I'm pausing because so many advisors go, okay, Andy, but like, what do I say to my existing clients? And I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you have to communicate that you have something different. That's right. Right. So, sorry, go. And, and once you believe that to be true, yes. why, why wouldn't you want them to know about it? Yes. And you'll get better at essentially reapproaching, and you'll know you'll go through your book, and if you're like, "Hey, this person's 75 years old, what do they have to plan now? Taxes an issue, everything's coming out of their Social Security or IRA." Like, it would be a stretch to do that. Right. You will go through and be like, "Oh, I believe this client owned a business. I don't know enough yet to know if it makes sense, but it makes sense to meet with them and practice my whiteboard session with them." I'm going to go back and get all new information. What's changed in their life? Because when right. I was an investment advisor, so mm -hmm. this isn't picking on that model. I didn't know a lot of that stuff because I, I didn't ask for it. All I really cared about, hey, are you going to keep your money with me? Right, right. In my first fact finder, I'd ask a bunch of questions, but things are so fluid that a year later I was like, hey, how things going? Okay, your investment account's doing pretty good. Here's this. Like, okay, let me know if you have any questions. And I moved on. Yeah. Re-engage them with a different conversation. Yeah. It'll only help you with them. And there's a good chance you see an opportunity that you can then say, hey, I want you to know we have a different vertical or value that we've added to our business yeah. that you need to know about. Absolutely. There's so many things we help clients with with tax planning, estate planning. In the past, we've served you on the investment, and that's a superpower of ours. We're really good at that. But I want I want you to know about this other service we're offering clients. Yeah. Just get some reps. I mean, these people are friendly to you. Like, yeah. What's the worst that can happen? They're like, oh, great to know. I appreciate it. And you you back off. To the next tier, so not only are you getting your current clients in, but you start attracting other clients that are uh, real estate investors. They don't want to hear about mutual funds or insurance right away. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, land... Uh, Real, real estate professionals a lot of times, you know, realtors are that way. They want to own real estate. Uh, or you'll get into a, a lot of business owners talking to one today that's like, I don't really want to invest money in the market. I'm worth $19 million. And in the past, I would have been like, okay, we'll ever ca call me if you ever want to. Yeah. Now we're going to say, okay, it's $2,500 a month for us to help you with your tax strategies. We'll talk through your real estate planning. Like, what's the risk tolerance there? Hey, we need to look at your estate planning. And there's a good chance someday that person invests money or sells their business and we'll be there for that. So getting the right clients in the door is huge. And that and that's that's a skill you need to learn. Like what does a potential planning client look like? What level of complexity is necessary to have this conversation? Right. The next tier is if you're not converting those clients then to where you've learned to say, wow, there's there's opportunity here, and they're not saying yes, it's just because you're not communicating the value very well. Which is the hardest thing for advisors. It's like, no, I'm really good at that and I connect with people and yeah, but if you're not pointing out an idea that's big enough to justify your fee in the first right. or second meeting, who's going to say yes to that? Yeah. Most of our people say yes because I say, okay, here's a problem. Here's what I would do if I were you. Oh, by the way, in meeting two or three, our fee is going to be $7,500 for the year. The ideas we've already given you in these first two meetings are going to save you about $20,000. And we just did that in two weeks. What do you think? If someone doesn't say yes to that, you don't want them as a client. Yeah. So move on to the next person. Because you don't even say 20. You say 20 over the next this many years, it's going to be more. It's yeah. We create. Right. We we point out big problems to clients, not small ones. It's def. It cannot feel like, let's keep doing what we're doing, but just pay me differently to talk to you a little more. Right. Like no, there's a specific idea and action tied to this that's paying for itself. Right. You have to do that. So, to the question that was sort of posed to, uh, to you about this frustration that one of our uh, members of our community is having, again, I think they have the infrastructure for it. I think that their planning ideas are solid. I think that. They're just talking with a lot of unqualified. Their their lead source, which will remain nameless, yep. is just not giving them really great leads for yep. planning. Yep. Um, again, it's a good thing to know the problem, so you can yep. go, okay, that's the problem. I'm going to stop, you know, relying on that lead source. So 
Um, which I think they're actually they're, they're paying for that regularly. Mm-hmm. So that's not that's not going to pay for itself in, in the planning. That's right? right. So for someone that is like they, they're in they they bought into the model, you know I know that for for a fact that they've gone through our program, and that's where the frustration is coming from is they're mm-hmm. doing all the reps, yep. and then it's just not with the right people. That's right. There's you need to identify if they're under the age of fifty, for example, they need to be in like high income careers, mm-hmm. uh, attorneys, doctors, like these people can spend $5,000 on a financial plan and they need a lot of help, but all their assets may be locked up in a 401k or they're in real estate. If, if your leads coming in are, you know, blue collared workers, all their money is in their 401k at work. They get a W2 each year. You may be able to charge them a $500 planning fee just to onboard them and, and get a yes, but those are probably not the ideal clients for the consulting and planning model. They may be great investment clients when they retire or they still need some, you know, insurance help. Right. Great. But you can't overcommit yourself. You know, it's like trying to build a business by opening up Roths for clients' kids. I'm all about it. It's great. But like you will, your business will go under if that's what you're trying to do. Right. So we need to run a healthy business. And if you're saying, I want to be a planning consulting firm, and this was when I was with, with Raymond James for years, we had a lead source that was great for a share mutual fund transactions. Because people came in with 30000 or 60000 or and yet advisors just cranked that out. I eventually was like, I don't know if I want my practice to look like a 1,000 clients someday with all A shares. Yeah. So I had to pivot and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to a different level of client from complexity standpoint, and that became business owners. Yeah. I, I, will, I will speak to maybe a challenge that some of you are listening or maybe feeling or watching on YouTube, like that, that I'd like to be there. I'm not there today. That's right. And again, I would go back to our last episode where we talked about like, Go seek the discomfort. Mm-hmm. Don't run from it. Like, yeah. go, okay, yeah, I understand. That's, I don't know those people. I don't. I was talking with an advisor today, and it was just like, you know, he was saying, hey, dad, how do I get out of this rookie stage? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, you don't, he didn't have a COI network at all, you know? Um, and, and, but last week, he's like, well, I think I know some lawyers, and I want to introduce my clients to them. And I said, how'd it go? He's like, it was great. Like, I, I made the connection. I got some ideas from the lawyers, and I'm like, you're getting there. That's it. You're yeah, getting there. You just have to start doing it. Right. And so I, I you know, I don't want to be cliche, but part of this is if you know it's difficult and you feel like, man, I don't I don't have those ideas or I don't know those business owners, I don't know those ideas yet. Like, good, you know the problem. That's right. You know, and I think I've I don't know if I've shared this before on, on the show, but one of the um one of the foundational parts of like a twelve step program is that the almost almost universally the first step is admitting you have a problem. And the, the really powerful thing about that is, and it makes logical sense once you kind of hear this out, which is that if that's not the first step, then none of the other steps matter. <laughs> yeah, if cool. you're not willing to say, I need to fix something, yep. then you're not going to do the work to do the other 11 steps. But here's the great part. If step one is just to say, man, I'm stuck. That's literally an entire step. Mm-hmm. That's like, if you do the math, that's like 8%. You're 8% to the solution. And yeah. all you've done is said, I'm stuck. Yeah, like all good. you have to do is admit and just go. I'm stuck, and what I'm doing is not working. Yep. And someone could go, "Good job." <laughs> yeah. like, I just said that I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm lost. That's like right. again, great job. You're almost ten percent there. You know what I mean? That's good. But that's powerful because yeah. a lot of people will just go, "It's this problem. It's that problem." Like, no, you're the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's okay. That is okay. Yeah, and I think. I have yet to speak with an advisor that has tried to fight and say, no, Stan, I want to continue to give all my time away for free. <laughs> the, the, the hang up is usually, am I willing to do what it takes to change that? Like, is the upside worth the effort I have to put out? And if you're you know, a, a seasoned advisor and you're making enough money, you may say no, but there could be another advisor on your team yeah. to, that elevates your practice. Like any elite of practice 10 years from now has this. Yeah. You have the ability to charge for your ideas and advice even if somebody doesn't buy something from you. It is coming. Don't be in denial about that. The only question is, is are you willing to address it now? Yeah. In an uncomfortable way to get there faster or are you going to wait until it's upon you? Yeah. So, so I, I, again, not one advisor has ever challenged me and like, yeah, if you can charge for your ideas and it's a big win for the client and a win for your business, don't do it. It always comes down to, am I willing to make the change? Yeah. We actually had a situation this last week where I was talking with an advisor, and he's really young. And I was like, well, what's your situation? He's like, well, I'm, I work with an advisor who's going to retire in five or six years, and he wants me to go through the program because he he believes that the future is 
you know, and, and it's it's advice and get and getting paid for your ideas. Mm-hmm. And he said, he's going to give me his clients and, and he wants me, not give, he's going <laughs> to yeah. buy the book. Uh, but he wants me to be prepared to serve them in this way. Nice. And I was like, that's really, like, that's wise of him. Because he's like, yeah, like, there's, there's people and there's complexity. He's like, he's not super excited about making the change because he's kind of almost done. Mm-hmm. But he said, but it, it, he said, if, I'm, if you're really going to take care of my people, you need to be able to do full plans for them, not nice. just do transactional work. And yeah. maybe it's for the next generation, right? right? But there is... Yeah, if your practice is going to outlive you, you need to start putting this in today. doesn't yeah. mean you stop doing it. doesn't mean you come to work more than you already are. Like, But you find somebody that's going to put this in your business. Again, increases the valuation of your practice. There's a lot of fringe benefits to it. But at the core, is is the delivery of advice going to change in the future? Is the market going to get wise to like, wait, I don't have to buy something. I can just get good ideas. Yeah. Whether that takes five years, 10 years, 15 years, like it is coming. Yeah. We've been called by some of the biggest firms out there saying, hey, would you help us? And if they're talking about it, it's coming. Our goal is to get ahead of that. Right. Well, and by the time this episode comes out, we will, and also I'll have it in the notes uh, of our show here or on YouTube in the um, video description of a calculator you can put in and say, what is what is the value of, I have this many meetings, mm-hmm. what if I close this percentage of financial plans and charge this much? And it'll do some really cool sort of live calculations of what that would look like. Yep. So we encourage you, like you know, our member who submitted this question, like acknowledge where you're struggling, mm-hmm. um, and and seek to to f- you know find more qualified leads, improve yourself, put yourself in different situations, um, and again, and I want to encourage you. I hope this is encouraging. Like when you say, "I don't like where I am, mm-hmm. and this is not working," you are you are, and I'm I'm going to take action. Like you are already actually closer to fixing it yep. than other people would just go. Oh, it is what it is. That's right. Only if you say it is. Otherwise, there's still time for change. We'll continue to bring you practical conversations like this one. And today we're announcing a new practical tool that you can use if you're considering adding planning or you want to know what would happen if you charged more for your planning. Our planning revenue calculator allows you to adjust your client meetings per month, your closing percentage, or how much you charge for your planning to show you the total annual revenue potential. To find the calculator, just go to stenmorgan.com slash revenue. That's stenmorgan.com slash revenue. And as always, thanks for listening to the show. We appreciate you.